It's Shop Talk, baby. This is the show where it's okay to be you. We're talking from Yale to jail and from the church house to the pimp house. Nothing's excluded on Shop Talk. So if you don't have a phone, I suggest you borrow one. Call in and voice your opinion live every Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Yeah, that's right. 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Don't forget to Shop Talk with your girl because right here, oh, we keep it real. Yes, we do. We definitely keep it all the way real. Got a great show planned for you lovely people today. I'm excited about it, of course. And today's topic is smile through your trials. So <laughs> I got my girl, y'all already know. I got Nick the Voice, Rugo the Movie Guy. We'll see what happens there. What's up, Nick? How's it going? It is going all right on this gloomy Saturday after we didn't had 80 degree weather two days in a row. 80 That's degree, 80 degree weather in Ohio, lovely people. Can you believe that? Exactly. Hey, different states had, um, I was shocked with yesterday, uh, with 80 degrees. Cause before that it was like 66. Maryland was like at 80. I don't know what's going on. What you think? What's going on, Nick? You know, Ohio got that bipolar weather. <laughs> this is the only state where you wake up in the winter time by noon you in spring by the evening well actually by noon you in summer evening you in spring and then you back in fall late at night so that's, it's all crazy that's all, it's all crazy. hilarious but, and, and, but you're right you you are right you are totally right rugo what's happening how you been hey. Oh, we, we live, we live, ready to go, huh? Oh, oh, always, yes, yes. always. Yeah, I don't know, it took me a while to get on, I don't know what was going on. Well, don't worry about it, you on, because we live everywhere. We live. <laughs> we live, we got the listening audience already on, so we are doing it, just come on in the room. Can you dig it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's jump right into these hot topics, let's jump right into it, we got a great show planned, let's go. So, did y'all hear about the pastor who um was tired of the awful singing at his church that he he turned listen wait a minute if you didn't let me school you let me catch you up on him he turned around the door and I guess it was an A selection this is me and my annex you know an A selection you know you got your A and B selection and he turned around and he said hold it <laughs> hold it. You are not an expert singer. Now, <laughs> now wait. I thought that was a nice way to say it, but during morning service, like, it's showtime. It's showtime. It's the time, you know what I'm saying? Y'all done went to rehearsal on Saturday. That's what we used to do. I don't know if they're doing it with the COVID, if they're doing it virtually, however they're doing it. And the pastor turned around and said, hold it, hold it. You are not an expert singer. I'm tired of the same people jumping up there singing these solos and you're not an expert singer. Let me see that. I got lipstick on my teeth. Oh, man, that ain't cute. Mm. Mess with some old lipstick. I tried some old lipstick today that I found in my makeup bag. Oh, shoot. Yeah, and it tastes like... Old it's like Play-Doh. It, <laughs> It won't you come know, off we, either. You know, we're really supposed to replace our makeup every three months. Oh, Ask um, me if we do that. Some yeah. of the, listen, the makeup artists, yeah, I know they do. Somebody like me, mm -mm, I had that stuff for years. That's probably why, you remember those little tiny lipstick samples that you still yes. <laughs> That's what this tastes like. It tastes like that. <laughs> I'm like, what is that? I got like lipstick on my teeth. That is not the move. Sorry, listening audience. Y'all already know how I do it. In true shop talk fashion. Like, wait, what's that? <laughs> so what would you do if you're in church and the pastor just stopped right in the middle of the A selection and say, excuse me, stop it. He has had enough. What would you do? See, if I was in the audience, in the congregation. There we go. I'm like the audience shared a concert. If I was in the congregation, me and my little ignorant self, I'd probably be somewhere with tears in my eyes, slumped in my seat, cracking up. If I was in the choir, I would be appalled. <laughs> yeah, because you, if you're in the choir, you can't say nothing. You're just sitting there, everybody looking. You got to hold a straight you face. No, you can't just read us like that. All right, Ruga, what would you do? 
you know what? I think I think when he when you pull a move like that, <laughs> it's bad. It's, it's I, I I don't know what I would do, but I think I would be kind of uh, um, I would kind of be upset with the pastor about that. If you was a choir director. I mean, it, it just, just, it just as being in the audience, you know what I mean? Just as being a member of that church or a visitor. If I was a visitor, I would damn sure be like, this my last, this is my last time here. Let me give y'all my five bucks and that, and that tithes and offering, and I'm out. You know, I'm never coming back. You know what I mean? But, um, because it's just like, if it, if it, 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 it it's a judgmental heart there. And the, the, the scripture says, make a joyful noise. You know, it doesn't say that that noise has to be in sync to, <laughs> <laughs> y'all can always see my face. Yeah. Look, I'm just saying. The shop talk listeners, that's all like they probably already know how noise. my face is. Go ahead. Make a joyful noise is what it say, you know what I mean? And, you know, I mean Don't so, sound like that was joyful. He uh joyful. Well, I mean the, the the heart what they say, the heart of the person, the heart of the person behind the, you know, because guess what? If if they if they terrible, they the best you got because ain't nobody else doing it. Right, and that's a mission in itself. So, who, who, why would he, you know, uh, talk bad about the mission they had in their heart to bring the to bring the, the the spirit of worship of God and G, you know, I, I'm assuming this was a, a Christian church because I I don't see any other church doing this. <laughs> Listen, on Nick. It's always it's always those good old Christians. They'll let you know how they let you know how they feel, and they say, "Bless they hard, bless right." They hard. Right. You no, know, but um, yeah, it's I, that's I mean, you know, it's too much. Now, what if he, what if he went up there with the scripture and he probably said some whack something once or twice, and somebody just said, "Hold up, stop!" I don't know none of that stuff you' talking about because we all been in the church service where the preacher go and say some stuff that you'd be like, "What, what are you referencing?" Okay, let me say right. this. Let me say this to that. <laughs> to that point, let me speak to that point. Uh, my uncle did that. <laughs> my uncle did that. Um, he stopped the past. He was like, that is not true. That is not true during the service. So some people are honest, but now if a pastor, you said you, that, that would be if you were visiting the church and the pastor turned around and said that you would, that's your, that's your last visit. Here go my $5 contribution. I'm done. Me, on the other hand, y'all know how I do. I'll be like, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> this pastor is off the hook. I will be back for some live entertainment. No, <laughs> like, Rugo shaking his head, no. It is, it is not Jerry Springer. I, listen, wait, not wait. Jerry Springer. I, I go to my church, and then I go to that church for entertainment. I go to early morning service in my church, and I go over there and be like, what is he about to yeah. say to See, he's that? trying to get a reality show. <laughs> That's all he trying to do. That's what he's he trying, trying to, to do. You're right. You're right. Put all that trash. Come on. He's <laughs> he trying to get. He trying to be on uh, uh, MTV Road Wars for preachers or something. I don't know what he's doing. You know? <laughs> he said Road Wars for preachers. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I mean, come on, man. That that is it's a little extra special, man. That just I don't know. I ain't with it. Yeah, that's embarrassing. He should have been there at rehearsal and then pulled him to the side at rehearsal. Like, listen, it's the same folks getting up every Sunday singing and you be off key. I need y'all to get that together at rehearsal. Don't do it. Yeah, I mean, you know, but the thing, but the thing is, too, though, you know, he should be recruiting more people. I mean, right. you got to get more people involved and stuff like that. But, it's hard to get people in the choir. It really is. Yeah, because you got dudes like him. You got dudes like him talking about, uh, uh, hold on, I'm going to shut this whole production down like he James Brown or something. You know, ain't nobody come and put no cape over that dude when he done preaching. <laughs> come on. We gotta well, get listen, when you, got, when you got members that swear for down, they Shirley Caesar and uh, Vicky Winans and all them. Nah, baby, sit down. <laughs> sit down. You are not they, they they may have had it back in the day, and then they lost it along I've, the way. I've witnessed that. I've <laughs> hey, I've ear witnessed that. I've ear witnessed that. You know, back in the day, I've seen a couple of them things. You'd be like, oh, what was like? <laughs> people be like, oh, let me go and get such and such to come sing at the at the at the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> 
Because they knew them when they was young. They get up there and they'd be like, what in the world? Like, nah, man. Like, we, we get, I mean, but it's a joyful noise. It's a joyful noise. Listen, but, you know, that's true. Joyful, I don't know about noise, yeah. <laughs> I went to a wedding, right? This wedding was absolutely beautiful. I'm just there. I'm I'm there. I'm a guest. I'm enjoying all of it. This singer starts singing, and he was singing. Well, y'all know how I feel about John Legend. Anyway, I'd be like, oh, sleep. But the song was all of me. And the people his in his era, I guess he was like the bomb back in the day. They was like, oh, he could sing. Oh, he could sing. This cat hit the all of me. I can't even, listen, it was worse than me singing. Y'all know I cannot get down, okay? <laughs> but I think I would have been all right. He sang that song, and he started with the all of me. He hit wrong key. I was like, and I had my head like down because John Legend put me to sleep. And I heard the music. I was like, here we go, this elevator music. And when he started singing, it woke me right up. I said, and listen, this is what... It, this is what the people was whispering. The the peepus, shout out to Joe Teague. <laughs> the peepus was witnessing. They, they was whispering. And I was witnessing this. Oh, he used to be able to sing. He could sing back in high school. He got a head full of gray hair. <laughs> Y'all should have had a rehearsal. What happened? It was terrible. All of me was, I will never look at all of me the same. Now, there was one guy, I'll never forget Speaking of that, back in high school, they're saying, um, I'll be sure. I ain't going to say his name because we still cool. He might be mad after. We might not be cool after this show. <laughs> <laughs> but he's saying, all, he's saying um, I can tell you how I feel about you night and day. He hit that last note. And he tried to keep it going. Singing it. Holding it. Passed right out. Red ran. <laughs> <laughs> pass, pass right out on the stage. You shouldn't have held that note. And see, I'm so animated. I need to like, I need a, like a TV show because then I could go over there. Look, I'm looking down. Oh, he out. What happened? Trying to hold the note because y'all, people like you guys, encouraging him. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. They showing up for everybody. They like, ah, he's still holding the note. Everybody cheering them on. Pass, pass right out, but pass, lay flat out on that stage. That's crazy. <laughs> They're like, is he dead? Is he dead? What happened? Y'all a mess. See that people like y'all encourage y'all encourage that stuff. Listen, I had a bad experience in my first wedding. I got two people that I know can sing. Okay. Well, three people. One, she she decided to go to a baby shower today at my wedding. Uh oh. Never heard of the night before. Uh -oh. I, want choke, I want to choke life out that child. But the other two, they practice, 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 you know. And I, everybody in town know they can sing. Mm -hmm. Why did they get up there in my wedding? And I was in the back room. And when they first started singing, my eyes got this big. I was, about, I was snapping back there in that back room. Everybody was trying to calm me down. I was like, what is they doing? Well, what Girl, happened? It sound like chickens being choked. So at that moment, would you turn around and say, I thought you were an expert singer? Like how I did, could turn around and say nothing because I was in the You was in the back room, but did did you want to say it? Did you want to say it? Child, I wanted to say it. I asked him afterwards, I said, What happened? What you that? Y'all practice all night, what happened? Y'all right. sound that horse boat. They was mad at me. I don't care, y'all ruined my wedding. Because I had a couple cousins like, where did you find them from? So it wasn't just you. Because, you know, sometimes like when you get up in the morning for church and you, I guess it's that phlegm to be laying on that vocal cord. And you, <laughs> look at Rugo Ru Ru shaking his hand off. But you know how you would be like, is it my ears? Do I have early morning ears? Or is it the early morning voice? You can't tell what it is. You know what I mean? It'd be early in the morning in church and you'd be sitting there and you'd be like, why they sound like that? Because their voice it hadn't got there year, yet. So they ain't had no excuse. So what time was your wedding? My wedding started at 3. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. That was done. Yeah, that was good. I, a couple of my cousins was like, Nikki, I know doggone well you didn't ask them to. I was like, y'all, I ain't lying. They can really sing. I was like, that's why I asked them. Otherwise, it would have been somebody else. They can really when they they couldn't sing there, that day? Child, listen, they couldn't do nothing that day. Couldn't. Listen, like I said, it sounded like they was choking the chicken. <laughs> For real. I was sitting there in the back. Almost broke out in tears. I was so mad. I was like, oh, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. Was it, was it video? Somebody probably got a video somewhere. Oh, man, i like to hear that. <laughs> Look at me like yeah, somebody probably got a video somewhere. I'd have to find out who, but yeah. I, I like was, to I hear that. Oh. In fact, I gotta find the tape because the church usually, you know, churches they'll usually record back in the day with the cassette tapes. So I gotta find the little cassette tape because it's on tape. I just gotta find it. As okay. a matter of fact. Girl, okay. listen, so how, need it. So how do you tell somebody that they can't sing? Do you not? Rugo clearly feels as though that the pastor should have, um, what, had a meeting or something? No, she, she said that. I think the pastor... Yeah, I oh, that. you said that? Okay. Yeah. I think if the, if the pastor ain't up there willing to do no solos himself, he need to sit his ass behind that pool pit and just preach. Now, you know a lot of pastors like to sing <laughs> solos. But that's, A lot of pastors like to get up there and sound horrible themselves. Hey, that, that's true, too. But I'm saying, like, you know, I mean, because because let's let's look at it like this: most people in choirs they volunteer. You know what I mean? They volunteer. It's a ministry. Not only, not only they volunteer, they also pay in tithes and pay his salary. So he can't tell them the truth. So I mean, he could he could tell them the truth, but I wouldn't be trying to put him. I wouldn't be trying to embarrass people, and that's what I think. That's what the intent was. I don't know, you know how bad it was. Well, you know what? I do know how bad it was. You can find this on YouTube. It was bad. They looked the part, but it was bad. It was bad. Well, uh, I mean... Their robes was cold, though. The robes was cold. Yeah. <laughs> so they got a Dallas Cowboy problem. Listen, that's the colors of the robes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You sure? Look, you, you sure you ain't see it? <laughs> you don't know. No, I ain't see it, but I just thought about, like, teams that just imploded, and I just said, like, that just sounds like a Dallas Cowboy <laughs> problem. Like, they got, on paper, how it looked on paper, they should be winning a whole bunch of games. Granted, their quarterback is out, you know. But still, you know, they roster, you would think, like, oh, okay. And then it's like, nah. So it's like, oh, <laughs> it's like psych. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I, guess, I guess the issue is, if he had an issue with how they sound, he should have took it up with the director of the choir. Yeah, after. Yeah, after, True. because he's yeah. not going to be at rehearsal. But now, how do you tell your pastor, if you have a pastor that always want to sing a solo, that can't sing, how do you tell him that he can't sing? You got some of them old, 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 old mothers like Sister Betty <laughs> that will tell you. <laughs> they, they, they'll tell you, pastor, come on now. Baby. Now, baby, baby, <laughs> you, you, you know you can preach, pastor. You know you can preach, pastor, but please, baby, just... Just pastor, don't don't, don't say please. <laughs> Lead that to the choir. <laughs> Lead that to the choir. I just call it a day, huh? All right, let's all let's move on to what broke the internet. The three year old birthday girl. Now, if you did not see this, let me catch you up to speed. There were <laughs> there were it was a birthday party. The girl was turning little baby was turning three years old. Um, it was another little girl at the birthday party that was right next to her. Now that, let me catch you up. And what ended up happening is when they were singing happy birthday and the three-year-old whose birthday party it was went to blow out her candles, but the little girl on her right blew out the candles. That little three-year-old snatched that girl by her hair. She was serious. Now see that's that hair snatch. It had history behind it. So I kept saying, I said, she's only three? Man. And then, look, I'm like, are you snatching her like that? Like, if she done blew out her candles? Thank God they ain't 33. It could be something different. You know what I mean? We don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> look at Nick's eyes. However, I thought they looked a lot alike. Well, guess what? Sisters. Yep. Sisters, because I'm looking at their um, outfits. I said they had the same kind of shorts. 
but they looked alike. Her one, the little three year old, her hair was pulled back. The other one was just down. And the way that she blew them candles out, she sh shrugged her shoulders like whatever. Yes, she did. I said, "Oh, that and was that's playing." That's why her little sisters tried to snatch the soul out of her body. I feel like I feel like she told her that. I feel like she told her, "I'm gonna blow out your birthday candles." Did you see it, Rugal? It broke the internet. It, it sure broke. Did. Where you been? What What'd you think about that? Um. How would you have responded if you were there, Nick? Probably the same way. She would have got hit. I'd have gave her a two piece, but that little girl did one better. Tried to snatch the soul out of her sister body. I said, You can tell when they grow up which one is going to be the it starter. <laughs> minus, H, minus HT, because we, you know, mm -hmm. and which one is going to be the enforcer. That little three year old is going to be the enforcer. She's going to be whipping some behind. Listen, you could tell by the way she snatched the girl up, and even after they broke them apart, that little girl turned around and flipped her little hair. She snatched her again, <laughs> yes, she did. Yes, she did. I looked, I said, Oh, I said, No, it's history behind that. That wasn't just a, a guest at the birthday party. She that's you see the, the little happy birthday uh picture session that I posted. No, I didn't see any any of that. I'm sure the listening no, I'm sure the listening audience hadn't seen that either. But I'll have to check it out and I'll look uh, and post it on the page so the people been, that's listening can hear it. Taken pre snatch. Oh, that's you know what? They had a lot of memes with the two little girls. They had um the birthday girl talk about some my plans. And then they had uh the girl that blew out the candles twenty twenty. COVID yeah. 2020. I just started out. I was like, yeah, you be ready with your plans. And they just blew them out. Like, no, this is what we are going to do. All right, let's talk about the bucket list. Do you have a bucket list, Nick? Yes, I do. How many things on your bucket list do you know offhand? <laughs> Let me see. Probably like five to ten. Okay. How I'm always how many left? Track and stuff. Never subtract from your bucket oh, list. <laughs> Never. Oh, no, I take that back. I did do one thing on my bucket list, and that was to get on a cruise ship because I always swore I would never get on a cruise. I don't know how to swim. I said, that's too much water for me to drink, and I don't eat fish. I, w <laughs> I got on a cruise, and it was like, I was actually in a moving hotel. The only time you could tell it's moving if it, it, it was like a, to the waters, it was a little bit choppy. And really, even standing outside watching, like standing outside just looking, mm -hmm. you could not tell that the ship was moving. You can't feel it like oh. that unless the water is really, really, really choppy. But I enjoyed myself, so I want to do it again. Mm. But, um,. Yeah, I have several things. There's places in the United States that I really want to go that's on my bucket list because I've never been. I want to go. I have family overseas. Born so you want to shoot. So traveling is one. Definitely. And you have to accomplish. You still have yet to accomplish those. But you being a travel agent, you'll be able to do it. Right. And then also another thing that's been, always been on my bucket list since I was younger. I want to. I, I don't care if I'm. 90 years old. I'm going to be on The Young and the Restless. That was always on my bucket list. I want to be on The Young and the Restless. Well, you better hurry up because I don't know how long they're going to be, be on there. But you on your way. There. Go ahead, Rugo. What'd you say? By the, by the time she go get on there, she's going to be Aunt Mamie. She's going to be the rebirth. <laughs> I'll be that. I will be that. Like, Aunt Mamie came back. Look at that. <laughs> But that was on my bucket list. I always said that I want to be a character on The Young and the Rustlers. Even if it's a walking character for a day, I don't care. I want to be on The Young and the Rustlers. A cameo. Yeah, so, okay, go ahead, Rugo. Wait, wait, go ahead, Rugo. What was your question? You want to be in the colonnade room? You want to go to the colonnade room? <laughs> you know who watched The Young and the Restless. Yeah, I, I, I ain't going to lie. I used to watch it back you, in the day. Did you? Back in the day. With your grandma? Um, with, with pretty much everybody, but the most the most fun I had when I was in college, we used to watch it. Um, in uh, college, right y'all yeah. wait a minute. In college, uh, guys watched the soap operas. Hey, 
everybody, well, you figure like, okay, first of all, I went to a, a, a small private liberal arts school. So it wasn't too much of like entertainment. Like when I went to college, when I went to other colleges, and they was like, oh, we got cable. I was like, you got what? You're like, ow. You know, I, remember when I went to school, you had to, if you wanted to call home, you had to buy like a card to call. You know what I mean? It wasn't no cell phone or nothing like that. I, I guess I'm dating myself. But the point was, was that like in our common area, there was like one television. And, um, and we had some friends that would commandeer the television to watch two things, Young and the Restless and Martin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like you did have a common area. Mark, yeah, Martin, we watched. Nick, I don't know. When we was in college, we were watching the Young and the Restless. You ain't watch Young no, and the Restless? We were the Young and the Restless. <laughs> Y'all was the young and the restless. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, we kicked it. And look at you sitting there just watching it. Oh, really? You just yeah. came, came on our way. We kicked it. We show so much. I probably shouldn't even be putting this out there and gambling. <laughs> Man, we did all kinds of stuff. In my college, listen, there was this guy that was an expert at making fake IDs. I was like, how you making fake IDs? Listen, and he happened to be, he had big poster boards with different states painted on it. And the one he I got was he was from Indiana and he was from Indiana so he had it perfectly. So I was like, let me get that one. He he would stand in front of that big poster board where the picture part was. They would take a Polaroid picture. They would cut it out and laminate it. They they laminated it, cut it and a per and make it look just like that. Cause I had when I went to go use it at a club I was a free listen. I was not even 19 yet. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get caught. I'm going to get caught. I'm going to get caught. Oh boy, he looked at it. Then he looked at me. Then he looked at, he looked at me. He said, okay, you go ahead. <laughs> listen. Oh boy made money in college making fake ID. That's how they were making fake IDs back then. And I know they a lot more advanced now with making them. But uh, yeah, we did Rugo, did you have a fake ID? Nah. Oh, look, see, look at, look at, Ru see, that's why Rugo is on the show. We need to balance. Look at that. Listen, listen, we were watching the young and the restless in the commons area and he don't have no fake ID. I did not get a fake ID made. Shout out to my cousin, Teresa Nall, Teresa Rice. I used to go get hers. Shout out to Marvin Jones. I used to go get hers. It was in Cleveland. Like what? Boom, boom. This was it. I didn't get one made. I used to just use theirs. But now I'm saying, look, now at this age, I wish my child would. She graduated college, but I'd be like, what? You're not using my ID. Are you crazy? Right. Man, my cousins was the bomb. I was doing well, it up. I didn't use my fake ID when I came, up, when I came home to, for college and visit. I wanted to go to the BMW and stuff. Now, there's too many people in there knew me, knew I used my, I sure did use my fake ID to get in there and got in there and party. Too. I, I got a problem. I got a problem. Did you say the VFW in college? Who's going the VFW? That's for old people. Yeah, when I came home from college during the summer, I sure did go in because I wanted to go in there with everybody else. Listen, listen, it's for old people now at our age. Like, <laughs> how? Who want to be in college going to the VFW? Like, See, our VFW in Farrell was. Popping. It didn't matter how what age you was. The BMW v and the Elks. Listen, That's what I'm saying, folks from Youngstown. Listen, there. listen. Talk about Youngstown, Ohio. Lovely listening audience. But listen, when you break down and you have letters, is the name of your club. That's for senior citizens. See, we were like the flats, <laughs> the mirage. You know, when you got fancy names, then you go. But when you start breaking down to letters, see, old people, they be like, oh, I ain't got time to say veterans. What's it? Veterans of war. What is the VFW stand uh, for? Uh, veterans of war. Veterans of foreign war. See what Foreign I'm saying? War, yeah. There you go with the BFW. You start breaking down alphabet. That means y'all too old for me to be kicking it with. I need something suave. What was y'all yes, club, we uh, Rugo? Old folks out. What, what, what was your, oh, them old folks was mad too. What was your uh, club, uh, Rugo? What's that? The Stratus. Oh, that was a teenage place, though. That was it, though. Go ahead. The Strat yeah, that was a teenage place. The I'm trying to think like places, like you said, places I was in that I shouldn't have been in. Uh huh. I remember I um I got into Larry's. Uh, See, Larry's, Larry, 
first, not L Y. But I mean, I, I mean, I was I was over the drinking age, but I wasn't uh, uh, Larry's age. You wasn't of Larry's was, age. Yeah, you know, you had to be like forty nine to get in there or something like that. You See, know how it used to be. Like yeah, all the clubs. Forty nine. We still can't get down. in. We still can't get in. <laughs> like yeah, it still can't get in, right? If it was, you know, well, you remember how I was? They used to have the escalation on all the ages. You got to be like thirty five, ninety nine, right, or, right, forty and over. But again. but see, that's when when you start having names, that's when you got to be a certain age and older. See, and when I say names, when you start naming after, so you got like friends, forty and over, freedoms, <laughs> Larrys. You know what I'm saying? Now, this is what we doing. But when you have nice names like the Mirage, where we going? We going down to the flats. Uh, the Zales. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Donzies in Pittsburgh. Do- Donzies. Yes. Do- Donzies, you had to be a certain age, too. See, that's a name, though. Yeah, but you got uh-huh. to remember where, where we at, though. You know what I mean? It was, a, you know, it was, but, it was not really good. But, but listen. I mean, a lot of stuff going on. Clubs, like club names that was over, over 50. So-so's. They can't even come up with the name. See, that's how old they is. They're like, even going to So-so's. We, we got, those are the, those <laughs> the only, I mean, historically, those may have been the only clubs. I mean, the only bars or whatever you want to call it. Ringside. You going to the ringside? I ain't going to ringside unless I want to fight. The Davidsons, right? The Davidsons, um, yeah. Yeah, but I mean that's the thing though. We, 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 I mean, I mean, I, I think there's been a couple new places that have popped up, right? Like flashes in the pan, you know. So that's but, it's, a, um, it's a club called Flashes in the Pan. No, I'm saying the club's <laughs> lifespan has been a oh, flash in the pan. Yes, you know what I mean. Like, like I, I mean, like think about it. Like, what new, what new, cl- what clubs over the last three years has still are still here? Like, or or they weren't. There that, that are you know what, like what is it like? I mean I don't know. I want to give a breakdown of all the clubs in the area, but the point is is that there's been a lot more closures than than openings. Well, yeah. you, it, it has it's been, especially now. Out. But you look at the generation. Like I don't want to kick it with them, so now I understand friends, Frida's, yeah. Larry's. I get it now. I get it. I didn't get it back then. The breakout. Yeah. yeah. The, the breakout. Remember the breakout? Listen, I used to like to watch the show. Let me get in the breakout. My girl Latrell, you was able to get in the breakout. But then you look at it, you be like, oh, the breakout. I probably shouldn't go there. Partner. And you know I'm so commercial. So partners, I felt like, oh, you have to have a partner to go in the partners. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what's in a name? That was my spot. What, partners? When I first started coming over here hanging out, when I first joined the club, yeah, I was always in there. See, look at her. We kicked it. But Rugo is, he lived the real college life. The commons area, it was like a different world, huh? Y'all was it down was, there? It was a different world. <laughs> yeah. It was a different, all together, yeah. What, what did you experience that you'll take with you in college? My degree. <laughs> you got your degree. Now that's a good thing. I had to go back. I ain't flunked out, but I said, let me withdraw beforehand. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, but because it was it was real where I was at because they before like all like you know how it is now it's like the schools they try to if you ain't really performing and stuff they try to like cut you off because they're getting in trouble with financial aid. Mm-hmm. But this school, the school I went to, if you weren't like it was people who was there for their first semester who didn't come back for a second because they they said we we don't want your money anymore because of you the. Know what I mean? Oh, because it'll show that they're the graduation rate. Yeah. Um, go ahead and shout out your school and your award. Oh, uh, Till College in uh, Greenville, Pennsylvania, where I was the second annual Martin Luther King, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, community Service, the second annual award winner. But okay. But but the, but the thing was, they were quick to they were quick to be like, uh. Like in the beginning, they said, they, I don't know if all colleges do this, but we had an orientation and they said, look to the right, look to the left. After these people ain't going to be here, you might not be here either. That's <laughs> what they said to you guys? Oh, they doing it like that, too? Yeah, they, they did it like that. Like I, I graduated in December and we had like about, I think it was 48 people out of the like a 400 member class or something like that. Wow. 
Yeah. You know what? I when mean, I first be, when I first big, went though. when go I ahead. first went to college, it was fun, 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 and I had fun. I had to go for me. But I will say with this generation now that I see, you know, the upcoming generation and even like with my children's their generation, they're all about college and getting their degree. My generation, we was all about college and having fun. Rugal, um, that was nice of you to do the right thing. <laughs> went to school. You went to school to learn. I And I used to hear that too. What do you go to school for? The party? Listen here. I had fun in high school. <laughs> I had a blast. And no, I didn't take too much serious. But I wasn't no F stoop neither. And my thing was, you had to do this if you wanted to do that. And so I knew what I had to do. But I had a blast. I can't take it. I, I want to take nothing back that I did because I had good. I made decent decisions. I made decisions based on my future. And I'll put it that way. If y'all want to do that, y'all go right ahead and do that. I'm not doing that. I'm not trying to be tied up in nothing. Because uh, I don't want the phone call. Talk about some. Hey, can you pick her up? I didn't want that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you made your decisions wisely. Having a good time partying. I think everybody, I, I really feel like everybody should have the college experience. College is not for everyone, but everyone needs to experience it. Even if you go and visit, you know, you go to the dorms and back in, you know, back in the day, $5, you was rich. You remember that, Rugal? But I do remember we watched Martin. Huh? How, how much money did you have, Ruba? Five hundred. What you talking about for school? A hundred school. Did you have you? Did you always have money in school when you were in the dorms? I had resources. See, look, see, Ru, see, Rugo was from the <laughs> suburbs. Y'all, <laughs> Rugo was bougie. We five dollars. You was rich. It was like, what? What you got? Five dollars. We got some chips. What you gonna eat? What you gonna eat? I was like, I'm going home. See, I, I wasn't too, too far. I knew where to go. I'm going home. And I'm going to chill. I was four hours away, so I had no other choice but to make, to see? To make it. Shoot, it was, it was Taco Bell. I remember when they built Taco was, Bell. You remember that, Google? Cafeteria and everything was called Taco Bell. Listen. I got so tired of Taco Bell. What about that card? Google, did you have a card? The food card? No, at our school we didn't. We had a traditional cafeteria. Yeah, but so you just had to show like the, your you ID. Had, you just wipe. Yeah, you just had to show your ID, and you yeah. you sat down like a cafeteria. Like there was no limit on what you could have. Oh, see now, I was a YSU. Now CJ Claudia, shout out to you. She was a Kent, and you know, ain't nothing like a Kent State party. <laughs> I sound like a straight up party, but I did it. I got my degree. <laughs> But the, um, listen, we would go down to Kent and she was such a hostess. They had cards and the cards was, um, you can get what you wanted, like the a la carte or whatever off your card. You were allotted so much, man. She would be hosting a party and had nothing to eat. She'd be like, get what you want, Joe, get what you want. Next thing I know, she ain't got no money on her card. Why are you going to eat the rest of the month? Me personally, I wouldn't have done that, but I appreciate you hosting. Look. Hosting us to kick it to the YSU party because they were able to go to the cafeteria after it was closed. But my daughter, the same thing, I think, with um, Court. She has so much on a card after the cafeteria was closed. You know, then you get to go eat something. But Rugo, you just stay. You look, Rugo, you're so kind. Look at you so nice and just following the rules. You just went at the cafeteria I mean, times, huh? I had resources. <laughs> he keeps saying resources. Look, I, he keeps I, saying resources, I, Nick. I had resources. No, I, was, I, I was, you know, because I'm thinking of, I'm thinking back on it now. I, I mean, I don't know if I was that big of an eater during the um during like off periods or whatever. You know, what I mean, like off times, like after dinner. I don't remember. I mean, I th I remember certain things like wing nights and stuff when wings was like. 10 15 cent you know what i mean um but like um yeah i have resources man i don't know but you were skinny you know? with a t I, e -E. Was, I was 
when I when I when I graduated from college, I was probably about I don't know, maybe, maybe like two ten. No, one thirty. No, when I graduated from college. Oh, when you went to college, you was one thirty. When I went. To, Oh, when I went, no, when I went, I was like, I went, maybe I did eat more of that. <laughs> when I went, when I went, I know this for sure. I was like 165. And okay. I was like 40. Yeah. So you so did I, eat. I had some, I, you had resources. Uh, I had resources. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I get, I get the freshman 15, sophomore, whatever, and junior, junior, senior, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Bucket list. Yeah. What was on your uh, bucket list that you want to do? Or did you accomplish everything on your bucket list? Yeah, already. Heck no. Nah. Um, you know, I really don't. The only thing that I, I can say that I really did two things that I would like to do. Um, <clears throat> get a PhD and go to Galapagos Islands. All right, travel agent. Get with him. That, those are probably the, the two things that I would say. I would want to do. Wow. Maybe some other stuff. But that's pretty good. The PhD, so we can call you Dr. Rugal? Yes. Yeah, and I would I would make sure that people did. I'd be like, hold on. Uh-uh. Doctor. I'd be like, Snoop Dogg, what's my name? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. That's, I'm, that's you that's on my bucket list, too, because I'm going back to school, but yeah, I want to get, get to the, my, I want to get my PhD. So I'm gonna be going and going and going, but I'm gonna get it done, Doctor Nick. Yeah. yeah, my biggest problem with that is I don't know what I want to go for. But Either you, that or a JD. So, do you? Is it the name that you just want, Doctor Dre? Just why don't you just get a name change? Just change my name. Just change your name. Do you like Doctor Dre? No, I don't know. No, I I don't know. You know, I mean, it was. Before I had a really academic kind of career path, you know what I mean? But like now. That you definitely like, did. That you definitely did. I That's a good it. thing. Go ahead, hurry up and get it so I could call you uh, Dr. Rugal. Yeah. Go you for know, it. I got to figure out what I'm going to go for, though, because I changed my mind a few times. So, but your um, your degrees are in education? Um. Health and human service, services, Health and psychology, human, okay. that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my, my field, though, has been in those areas, though, in education and, and, and um, mental health and stuff like that. Okay. And healthcare. I have a question for you. Since the topic of today's show is Smile Through Your Trials, when you were actually getting your degree, and well, actually, once you achieved your degree and you got into the workplace, into your field, were you disappointed with the pay, or were you okay with yeah. the pay? Yeah, I was disappointed. I was disappointed with all of it. Why? Every every aspect of it. Um, be, because uh, <laughs> um, the opportunities weren't available as I as I thought they would be. And I kind of thought, and, and, and often when I would do the work that I was doing, especially like when I was in Head Start working with uh, doing Mel involvement, that kind of stuff, thinking like, well, I got to this point and I see what it is for me and I'm being drastically underpaid for my knowledge, skills, talent, whatever, you know. Um, how is it for the average person that's going through this without those particular things, you know? And so it... it um, yeah, it was it was disheartening. I don't know. Part of it was like could have been the area because I ended up leaving this area doing the same kind of work and almost got paid like two times the amount. So, okay. You know, but the thing is, is this? I, it's always this difficult. This kind of just breaking in, trying to find a way. You know, because certain jobs. The, the career path I always had, it wasn't like there was a set standard of, okay, now you do this, you've been here this long, now it's that, you get this pay, you get that, whatever. You know, it's always, you're, you're vying, best, you're always vying for your next position or wage based off of where you go, what grants you write, or something of that nature, right? So, it could be kind of difficult, 
versus like I go to a place, I punch it every day, and I've been here for this year, I get a raise this time. Because it like it's working for nonprofits, a lot of times you're in a situation where it's like, okay, we got a cola, you know, cost of living increase or whatever. And uh, but we're gonna use that towards healthcare. We're not gonna give you a raise for it. And it's like two percent to begin with. You know what I mean? So you can find yourself, even though you feel like you're doing good work. You're not doing work that's well compensated. You know, you're not being well compensated for that work you're doing. Okay. My question, I got another one. And then, Nick, I'm going to ask you the same thing, okay? Um, nonprofit, I, I want to piggyback on that. Nonprofit organizations, is it best to work for a non? Have you found, I'm asking your opinion, uh, Rugo, have you found it best to work for a nonprofit or for profit it really depends on what your ambitions are you know um i i feel like i had when i worked in non-profits i feel like i had more creative ex, even though there's guidelines and stuff like that i feel like i had more creative experience more creative was it more creativity on the job uh -huh. in order to be able to do stuff like oh i think i want to write a grant for this right and be able, you know, you can build upon it, right? But I would say, money wise, for profit, especially if you're selling something that people want. Okay. So it is, it's expensive because you can make money in nonprofit. You can, but it's kind of tough because, uh, you know, you, you, you can, because it's always about moving up the ladder, not just necessarily based off the merit of what you do in that particular position. Now you said something you were talking about, like writing grants. So doesn't like your income, isn't it based off of if you get the grant or not? Well, it's, it could be based off that if you are in a situation to get compensated at that level. So there's been jobs where I've been at where it's like, Oh, let me write in this administrative fee to be able to implement this grant, right? And so, well, who's the implementer? I am. So, okay, there's my raise. But if I'm writing a grant and I'm for a larger company and I'm working and I'm at the, you know, let's say I'm doing it from a coordinator's perspective, you know, I might write that grant, the, the money comes into the organization, but it's just monies to do the work that you work with the grant for versus capacity building in some cases. It just depends on how the grant is written. Okay. All right, Nick, have you worked in the field that you went to school for? No. Why is that? Did you change your mind along the way well, or what? Yeah, I changed my mind a couple of times. Uh, but yeah, uh, what I've actually been doing now is like more or less I'm trying to get into uh, human resources. And then also with me doing computers, I was going to go back and to computer science because I'm more so in the field of computers now than anything else, which I never thought I would be. I didn't even want to be bothered with computers at first. So that's what I'm actually going to go back to school for, like computer science, because you there's a lot of computer jobs coming up, especially for cybersecurity, because we have so many hackers and everything. And cybersecurity is one of the number one um, jobs. So that's what. Coming up. So that's so what you're. What that's what you're interested in. So that's what you're interested in now. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm going to go back to school for, and then I'm going to minor in human resources. Okay, now let's go back to the question. <laughs> what did you go? Let's no, let's start with this. I, what did you go to school for? What did you go to college for? Initially, out of high school, I, I, I went into pre-med. Okay, pre-med. Okay. And then, <laughs> then you changed your mind. To business. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. Okay, I don't well, like blood. Well, but here's the thing. You are, doing, um, you are doing your business. You got your own business. So, and you keep doing it. So, you're working in your field. Mine was education. I went in education and... After dealing with some people, I was like, oh, no, I, I won't do good with these high schoolers. It'd be, it'd be you know, mm -mm, elementary education, secondary English. I was like, oh, that's not going to work for me. Not, not with the way things are going now. Mm -mm. And then I end up changing into get the allied science. So there we go. 
And then I did my communications and I like to talk. Why not do the thing? You know what I'm saying? I don't sing, I talk. So I'm actually doing everything that I did um, or wanted to do. My bucket list, I did everything on my bucket list except go to the prom with Will Smith. That's what I plan on going okay. to the prom with Will Smith. Did you know that, Rugo? Did not know that. Yeah, I sent I'm a, trying to think. I sent a letter and everything. Was, that was, was that the brand new funk Will Smith? No, this was, yeah, this was the, no, this was the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air Will Smith. Oh, okay. Yeah, I sent a letter and everything. I guess he, he never got it. He was wrong, he was wrong. Look, I'm like, it was way back. Yeah, Wait a minute, one second. It was way back then. I sent the letter and I never got a reply. Darn. So I just settled for John. I just will, <laughs> will John peace. <laughs> was I up? Huh? Oh, no. Or Uncle Phil. <laughs> <laughs> never Uncle Phil never uh uh-uh. uh didn't even work for me did not work for me but I did complete um my bucket list alright here's the shop talk question of the week let's move along and th- when you hear this statement what's your reply any female that pays her own bills is single go ahead Nick would not say that because I mean you have some bills that you acquired on your own that I have some stuff that I acquired that I don't expect my husband to pay if he want to offer to pay I ain't going to turn it down but no I wouldn't say that okay go ahead Ruga the question was any woman who pays her own bills is single it's under the shop talk question of the week but it's actually a statement any female that pays her own bills is single. Um, nah, I would say more or less no. I, I don't. I don't understand that because I mean because we've had questions that have told us that there's been women who've been in committed relationships who flipped the bill for everything. And you know she should. I mean? She should be single. <laughs> she, should, <laughs> she should be she single. Could be, she could be. Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, we tackled this question a thousand times, you know, like, hey, is is he paying what he what he should be paying, or all that other stuff? Matter of fact, what what was it? Just last week, it was a question about, um, I don't know if it was a question or a scenario about the uh, lady, the rent and, and yeah, and the, the, rent. the mortgage or whatever. Remember yep. that? Rent the mortgage. Yes. She didn't tell the guy. She just said, "Hey, pay me." <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and she should, by right, she did everything right because he made an assumption. And and that's crazy because you'll make it. I'll catch you guys up. Last week, um, it was a young lady who was dating a guy. So she was single dating. Okay. And she never told him that she owned her home. He assumed that she was renting. So here you go. He's uh, helping her pay her rent. But has an attitude when he finds out it's her mortgage. Why is that? You're doing the same thing. So my question would be, you're okay with paying somebody else, but you're not okay with paying me. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're helping me both ways. But when you find out you're directly helping me, there's an issue. He thought it was wrong. He felt that um, her omitting, um, omitting that information was a lie. That's nuts. I mean, I mean, would he would he still help her if he knew it was her mortgage? I mean, because he still right. didn't be paid. So that's what I was trying. That's what I was struggling with. Maybe it was just the fact that she never told him. He probably. I don't know if he felt like. I mean, he would have. I'm sure he would have done the same thing. But I don't know if it was just he more so because she didn't she wasn't upfront honest with them or was it because he thought he was gonna get a free ride if you live in here you're not gonna get no free ride period so i was kind of on the fence with that 
And yes, she should have told him, but why are you mad? Be rent, mortgage, whatever, it still need to be paid. Was you still going to help? It seems, if you were still going to help, then shut up. It seems like, to me, I felt, I'm with you, Nick. I felt like as long as you knew that you could potentially get put out, you want to pay. But when you find, either way, you're going to get put out, you know, the mortgage versus the rent. So my thought was, what's wrong with his mindset? Go ahead, Rugal, you're a guy. You're a different type, different just, type of guy, but go ahead. I'm a different type of guy. I would, I, what I would say is, I, I mean, I just don't, I just don't think that um, being a woman being single equates her paying her own bills or whatever like that. I mean, the likelihood of any single person paying their own bills is high, but you know, I mean, especially if you want them on, <laughs> you know what I mean? if you're going to come home and have some electricity, some cable, then you better pay them. You know, that's the only way you can ensure it's done. Cause you know, sometimes you got people that, that, uh, use their power or money to influence people's behavior. So okay. sometimes you just got to flip it. You, you got to pay your own way not to be corrupted. I'll put it that way. Well, I'm going to tell you, if I'm paying all my own bills, look at you smiling. Look, that's so funny. If I'm paying all my own bills, I'm single. I'm single. Yeah. Like, you know, and I posed this um, up on the site, you know, so that people could respond. And I was truly outdone and amazed by the feedback that I got from the men. So the women were like, facts, facts, you know, yes, you know, but the men were like, well, she need to have her own and she needs to do this and she going to make a come up. You know, these are different people that were responding. Um, she's trying to use me for everything I got. She expect me to pay her bills and my bills too. All of that is what I got from any female that pays her own bills is single. All of that rebuttal. From making that statement. Why? Because here's the deal. Any female that pays her own bills. Is single. If she married. They'll split it. Or he may pay the bills. He may take care. You know what I mean? But it's a true It's a true fact. Well I mean. If you look at the doctrine of Beyonce. Pay my automobile bills. Bills, 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 bills. Pay them, pay them, pay them. She wasn't married at the time. She wasn't talking about being married and paying my bills. She was talking about doing whatever she wanted to do. No, 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 no. She didn't, she didn't say pay them. She said, can you pay them? Can you pay my automobile? Can you? That was a question. Can you? Okay. Okay. Look, I'm like, can you? Uh Now, if you can, then here you go. Because let's look at it. When, when you're a single woman, let's break this down. Forget, look, not forget, but we're going we're gonna to pin that. Usually single women, when you're out there, I'm, I'm just going to spill the tea. And Nick, you can spill the tea from when, look, prior to your marriage, okay? We usually have, not that we're sleeping with everybody, you have your lawn guy, you have your food guy, you have your utility guy. Rugo is shaking his head. You have different people that come through for different things because someone will come and help you. But when you get a man, and they might not even be anybody, like I said, you're not even someone, they may be your friend that's coming to help you. When you get a man, that man is expected to do what one, two, three, four men were doing. Now, can you, back to the Beyonce, can you pay my automobile? Can you pay my uh, all the other bills? Bills, bills, bills. That song. And she said, but she also said, I don't think you do it. I don't think, I you, do don't so think you do so you and me are through. See, here's the thing. If you cannot yeah. do all of those things, then you're not the guy for her. Because you got to step up. Now let's look. We're in survival. We're in survival yeah, mode. She's not one, she's a top one hundred top Billboard artists. If, if she don't ask me for nothing, don't be asking me for nothing. <laughs> Nick, you want to spill? The, yeah, well, you can spill the tea. Now you married. What do single women do? How, how do single women survive and get ahead? Like too much, huh? If they like me too much, you got a friend for this. 
and a friend for that. <laughs> Y'all wrong. Listen, it's the okay. Okay, tell me this. But, go ahead. Go ahead, Nick. But when I got with one who automatically just started giving me money, oh, you you want to go get your hair done? Here you go. You, you want to go get your nails done? Here you go. Oh, you need help with your phone bill? Here you go. That one I made my husband. See, and that's that one, number two. Exactly. Wait a minute, though. But exactly. That's the point that I'm making. So when somebody like they like you, it's not that you out there using them. It's just like, oh, OK. Our mindset, we like, OK, this one can provide for me. So I, uh, one guy uh, commented on the site that um, I'm not doing for her. I ain't providing for her. Well, wait a minute. Is In a husband, you're looking for a provider. So guess what? You're off my list. And why is it that we are called gold diggers when we want somebody to provide for us? We are not well, holding. Because I, I think that I think the issue with the gold digger is the intent of the relationship. And the, 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 I think that with the gold digger thing, the intent is only to get money, not to be in a committed relationship. Well, so wouldn't I that be a high price prostitute? Hey. Well, it depends on because that people doing everything for forty dollars now, so they ain't even high price no more. Nowadays, you mean. Forty dollars. Who came up with that? Some dude and some chick said okay, and then now they making it popular. You got forty dollars. Don't come to me with no forty dollars. Talking about some here. Here goes some pocket change. Sometimes I ask my husband for some money. He come handing me forty. I just look at look at him like, man, try again. Man, listen, it's hey, hey, this like he's out of joke. Listen, it's like he's out of joke. Listen, he's like, 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 listen, some of the younger ones, I don't know what happened before. Maybe, you know, they say history repeating itself. So maybe back in the day, they used to uh, do something strange for a little bit of change. You go $40 on a nice day. Get your life. Get your life. Right. And mm-hmm. to me, it's not even, they're so callous with sex now that it's just like, oh, it's just sex. <laughs> before, that, that's like major. Because once you give that away, you can't get that back. You cannot get that. You didn't gave this person this. They got it. They know what it's like. You can't get it back. That's just like in a relationship. There's a mission. There's a goal. Guys have goals. And I'm not saying that it's just sex. But I'm going to say it is. And then you have a woman who has a goal. Oh, oh so tell me. And from a male's perspective, Rugo shaking his head. No again to the listening audience. From a male's perspective. So is it... Is it you're in a relationship because of you need someone's personality, companionship? Is sex not a thought from a male's perspective? I think sex is a thought from a human perspective. Women like to get it on too. Well, now they really do, but not a lot. Because we, we oh, at- always, always they get one. To get, I, 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 ah, I, go ahead. They, they always want to put out. Always. They always want to put out Rugal. <laughs> There's, there's, there's not been a stop in the in the in the woman's libido. There's just been this there's just been this idea of how women can express themselves sexually. You know, they get you know if a guy if he has lots of women, he's a gigolo, whatever player, all positive woman, whore, or whatever, all that negative stuff. You know, it's all. I mean, what? Is all, go ahead. It's always been there. It's just a, it's just how society wants to accept a woman who is free with their sexuality okay that that made it sound real good <laughs> and accepting for everybody no because- i had one guy tell me once we do that we go together once we do, i was like we for real yeah but that that's it once you you be like oh okay some people feel that way my thing is if you with somebody over three months if it's less than three months is a theory y'all heard me say that before your theory if it's less than three months, don't be going around talking about some. We go together. We dated. We we did nothing. We talked on the phone. We, we talked. And I realized that that is not the one for me. Deuces. I'm out. Don't be talking about some. We dated. We did. No, we did not. No, we did not. Call it a day. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I had one. What did we, you know, met or whatever. Click by. We did. Listen, he came to my house. He was like. We go together. I was looking at him like, we go together. You get this away to somebody else. I'm going to hurt you. We go together. I'm sitting there going, 
Uh, I'm like, <laughs> look, look, bye, see ya. Bunch of crazy yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, bye, he's see ya. Crazy, he's not crazy, though. He just act, just like to cut up and have fun. But we actually did date for a minute, and we look, 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 y'all, go, y'all went together. You was like, okay, we go together. It was that easy, Rugal. We go together. Okay, we go together. I don't, I don't regret it. I don't good. regret it. He, we're still friends. We're still really good friends. He's, he's like. One of them fun loving types that you just want to be around. Okay. He's silly, everything. So, but yeah. But as far as being the Marion type, no. <laughs> now, see, I, I wouldn't want to marry. When you said that, um, Roy, you, you brought up a valid point as far as how people look at things. As a guy having a lot of women, he's considered a gigolo. As a female having a lot of men, she's considered a hoe. Don't nobody want a hoe, a male hoe either. I don't want to take you to the family reunion and all my cousins to slept with you. Get out of here. I don't want everybody knowing what you are like. Right. But like, oh yeah, I know what that's like. She thinks she got something. Mm-mm. I need to have exactly. something. I need to put you on a pedestal. I want you down there. You know what I mean? I don't want you on the you bottom gotta, shelf. Everybody know what it's like and they still trying to get it. Listen here. It don't even matter. I don't want nothing nobody else had. I mean, I don't, you know, I know you didn't drop straight from heaven and say here, boom, you know, brand new, but no, I don't mm -mm, get out of here because you might be a scholar. You might need a trophy. You know what I mean? (laughs) And they'd be like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know how he was. And you'd be sitting there, you eating your potato salad and they over there like, "Uh uh-huh. Yeah. No. Bye. I'm like, do you know any of these people? Okay, I am that person. I don't want you if you've been with everybody. Bye, see you. I don't care if I like you, if we vibe. If we vibe, boom. Or, But who wants somebody that actually tried to talk to everybody too? Get out of here. You want to feel special. You want to feel special as a female. So do guys have that? No, they don't care. And I'm saying, I'm, I'm, look, look, and I'm saying that. That's not true. Look, I'm like, and I'm, I'm saying that from a guy's perspective. Do y'all care? No, y'all be like, oh, okay, yeah, she can't be my wife, but I smash. I, I don't know if that's the truth. I, well, I well tell, explain it. What do you mean to explain it? I mean, I just I just kind of feel like, I, I don't know. I mean, I think I think you come to a point where you're like, well, when do you let a person's past be their past if they, if they want to truly be with you in the present? Now, that's, you know re- that's really nice. And, and and I'm glad you said that. That that's really nice, and I'm glad you said it. And and made it said it that way. Yes, let your past be your past. But when your past is affecting your present, there's an issue. Right. I used to hang around a lot of dudes and hear a lot of they talking it, and I would ask questions. Some of them didn't mind. And certain females, they'd be like, "Nah, man, she she cool, she cool." I would my. Then there's certain females like, yeah, dog, I had her go ahead. You can smash that. I, I know. Smash she do this and she do that. Yeah, you know, and be explained. I be sitting there going, y'all like talking like I ain't hear all the You like one of the boys, whatever. And, and that's how it is. <laughs> that's how it is. Guys do. They talk. And I so have more I male friends. A certain female, I be sitting there looking at her like this. Yep, I have more. She, um, what? What's the word? Man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I already know. The, um, I have more male friends than I do female friends and they do just talk and I'd be like man I ain't gonna be that one they talk about like get out of here with that one so y'all know who y'all tell marry me, tell me more, us or them. so tell me this Rubo, you got somebody don't know see what I'm saying I need to go to another country don't nobody know nothing about no, nothing so you ain't gotta ever worry about that lucky you I need to, that's lucky you. Lucky you. I, I need to go out the country uh, and just grab somebody and be like, oh, okay, well, I know y'all didn't, but then they come over here and run them up. <laughs> because you got right. people, you have people that will actually seek out to find somebody that you talk to just to, I don't know what to, j- just to say they talk to them. I don't even know. I mentioned who I went to the prom with. I'm about to tell you this. I mentioned who I went to the prom with, right? Why did he, you know, why did people reach out to him? 
Why do people reach out? They reach out to me for him. Who is that guy? Is he single? Is he? I'm like, oh my gosh, the thirst is real. Right. Like, what if we was going together? But I was really surprised. I said, I don't know if he's single. Like, what the heck? It's interesting how people will seek out, especially with social media, they will seek out the people. And that's why I said that um, with Facebook a while ago, I was saying, who needs the, what, what are they, plenty of fish, uh, Christian Mingle. Facebook is actually a dating site. Yes, people will slide into your DM or they say uh, direct don't message, that's a DM for those who don't know what the DM or inbox. What'd you say, Rugo? I was going to say, but the, the, the attempt, when you have people like that on Facebook, it, it can be kind of creepy, mm-hmm. I would say. Because uh, the the intent of a dating site is to date, you know. The intent, the intent on Facebook is not necessarily that it can end up being that, but that's not the intent. Or you know? the intent is to try to catch somebody up and screenshot it and post it on your page. How about some look at him? This guy married. Well, why would you even inter- no. entertain that individual? Like, why? Why would you, you know what I mean? Why would you entertain that individual? Why don't you say, hey, just like drama. I'm thinking so because if somebody is in my inbox and I know that you are married and it's inappropriate, we can stop it. You can actually say that's inappropriate. Um, can you, you could block them. You know, there's options instead of taking a screenshot and posting it or somebody like me will be like, listen, this is inappropriate. And if you do this again, boom, I'll let the world know. You know what I mean? Or just warn somebody. And if they continue to do it, then they don't care. But to just deliberately put, you know, say something like that or not even say anything, post something like that. I think that's terrible because you got to look at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is, yes, they may be married. No, they shouldn't be in your inbox that way, but they may have children. It's a whole nother animal. What are you actually doing? And it may be a, just a compliment. Because some people can't accept compliments. They'd be like, oh, or a friend request. I know somebody who friend requested a female and the female said, well, why, why are you friend requesting me? Um, they're married. Everybody don't want you. Right. It's like, okay, we, I see we have mutual friends. Hey, how you doing? Just because a male and a female and I request, uh, I request your friendship and we're the opposite sex doesn't mean that I want you. What do you say to that, Rugal? And then I'm gonna ask you, Nick. I, I say that's absolutely true. That just because you're kind to somebody doesn't mean that you want to be with them. You know, it's funny. It's 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 funny that you should say that because it, it reminds me of a time where it was somebody I knew. I just happened to see him in the store, and I'm like, "Hey, how you doing?" And they was acting all crazy. I was like, "I was just saying hello." That was it. You know what I mean? It wasn't nobody trying to. Like, there was no follow-up question. There was none of that, like, a second statement, none of that stuff. They just look like, oh, I, you know, like, uh, no, nah, I didn't like that. And actually, I've seen that happen a few times. Okay. To, um, to other other men who were, who had no intentions on trying to talk to the woman. They would just say hi, and then the lady take it to, the, the lady, the ladies in these situations took it to a whole nother level of escalation. What's your thoughts, Nick? From a female's perspective. Yeah, just because somebody, I don't think that. Even before I got remarried, I didn't think that, oh, okay, you might know me because we have so many friends, uh, mutual friends, or because of the bike. Because I got a lot of people that I send requests to because of the bike world when I, you know, we Mm -hmm. ride bikes and in clubs and stuff like that. So I have a gang of male friends and everything ain't not one time have they tried to or if they did and block me and say hey how you doing sis or whatever then you have those that are just going to be horn dogs anyway but, but no that i mean just because somebody sent you a friend request don't mean they're trying to jump your phone get your life okay they might be trying to network right just hi i just found it to be interesting that somebody thought that I'm thinking you are cutting yourself off from everything. And just like you said, network. And I just have to put this out here for my young ladies. Everybody is not trying to make an advance at you young ladies. When, but when you post 
booty pics. When you post boob pics. And then you have the nerve to say they're thirsty. Well, what are you serving? You serve the milk. Thirsty because you put it on. You you put you are and and to me when you that's advertisement. Right. That, that's, that's advertisement. The kind of attention you're looking for. So when you get it, then you have the nerve to get mad again. Get your life. Now I will say, and I'm gonna tell you something. It is advertisement, and there's some trickery to it. I have a friend of mine, and she's um overweight, and she would take her. She would take her profile pics and she would always do head shots, head shots, shoulder shots, you know. And when she met this guy on Facebook, he came to see her. He traveled. So when he got to her door, she was standing at her door and her screen door, you know, just, you know, waste. You know how screen doors are. It wasn't a full glass. She opened the door. He had no idea that she was that obese. He came to visit her. This was the meeting to the house. He was coming to visit her. He left. When he saw her, he didn't even come in. So she was devastated. But I said, well, what were you average? I said, he didn't know. And guess what? He went, I don't know if he stayed like at a hotel or whatever, but then he went back to Texas. But here's the deal. You have to, yes, Yes, um, for the listening audience, Nick is like, wow. I know he was mad. He was very upset. I know he was mad. He was very upset. And all the shots were head shots. And, you know what I mean, head and shoulders, whatever. The um, But he didn't know that she was as large as she was because she didn't show that. And to me, you know, when people respond certain ways, how can you be upset if you didn't... If this is what you put out there, let me put it that way. If she did a whole right. body shot, it'd be like, okay. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because her situation, they were talking on the phone, all was well, but he didn't like what he see because men are visual. Then you got these people who post booty pics and they want to be respected. You respond to what you, res- what you see booty pics and people are commenting on your booty. And then you want to say that's disrespectful, but that's what you're posting. You know what I mean? And then you have, your boob picks out or barely have anything on a sheer outfit. And they talking about your body. And every time your conversation, and that's another friend of mine, the conversation that you have with these guys, they always want to talk about sex. Well, that's what they see. Right. Now, if you want to portray something different, do your headshots. And then your conversation will be from the heart. I believe. Which, what do you think, Rugal? What you got to say? I didn't see you want to piggyback. <laughs> Go ahead. I just, I just, think, I just think that some of these things are stereotypical viewpoints of what people perceive men to do. I just think that um, ultimately, whoever I won't say men. That was a man in Texas. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just, I just kind of feel like some of it is just women being better. I shouldn't even say women. People being better. Uh, at selecting who they want to be with, engage with, date with, and all that other stuff. Because it is like when I'm hearing this, it just sounds like, well, this is a memoir of a whole bunch of losers. You know what I mean? Right. A whole bunch of people probably wouldn't be worth the time anyway. Right. Not necessarily, you know. I, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. All right, Rugo, what's happening in the movie world? All right. Well, I will tell you this. I just had the opportunity to catch up on Star Trek Discovery. Star Trek Discovery is on uh, CBS All Access, so it is a paid site. However, I did watch. I watched the first season, got away from it. The second season was done. Watched it all over the last couple of days, and um, started the excuse me, started the third season. Excellent work. It's a really good. Really good show. I think people should tune in and watch it. It's some if you're a Star Trek person, you'll really truly like it. The last season in, in, uh, introduced Spock because this is a story of actually Spock's uh, adopted sister uh, who was played by what's her name? Uh, I can't think of her first names. Uh, Martin Green is her last name, but she's African American. She was in. Um, the uh, 
Walk, uh, Walking Dead for a few seasons. I forgot who she played in The Walking Dead. But anyway, um, she's doing really great work with that show, and it's and and I'm I'm sad that I'm caught up because now I got to watch it week by week until January. So that that sucks, but it'll be worth the wait. It'll be my little. My little, my little something on Thursday nights. I think that's when it premieres. Now, there in the in the movie world, there's um, there there's a show called Bad Hair, which stars Ashante Adams. She's going to join Michael B. Jordan in a movie called A Journal for Jordan. So, a Journal for Jordan is based off of the um, a person that was in the that was killed in the Iraq War who was writing down memoirs for his son. Who was seven months year seven months old when he died? So it's based on, off of that um, piece uh, there. The um, the the show Black Hair is actually on Hulu, and it's it's basically about a woman who gets a weave that takes on a mind of its own. It's a comedy <laughs> horror show. <laughs> Wait a minute! It's, Wait a minute! It's a comedy. Uh-huh. Wait, wait! It's called what? It's called bad hair. Bad hair, and, and it, it takes on. Yeah. Uh, well, we yeah. know a whole lot of bad weeds and wigs, honey. That's you taking know, on the mind of their own. The, pre- the premise is terror strikes when a woman's new hair weave seems to take on a life of its own, and it's a comedy and horror. It's a comedy horror, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a movie. The runtime is an hour forty two minutes. I haven't seen it yet. But that's out there. Last week or a week before last, we talked about. I talked about the forty-year-old uh, version. If you remember that show on Netflix, the movie or whatever, did check it out. Um, I thought it was entertaining. It was a little bit too long. It was kind of Spike Lee esque in the sense of how it was shot, but a, a really good thing. And basically, it, it focuses on a woman who was a playwright a successful playwright in her thirties and now she's in her forties and she doesn't have the acclaim, the, the acclaim that she once did. And so now she's looking not only to break back into writing, but to rebrand herself. And so she becomes a rapper. And um, then uh, as she starts to rebrand herself as that rapper, it starts to influence her work in a way that she didn't know it would, it would. It would. And so she um, has some success and then she challenges that success based off of how, how it makes her feel in- intrinsically. So I think it's a good watch. It was entertaining, and it kept my it kept my attention. Again, I thought it was a little bit too long. Was, I think the runtime was two hours and four minutes. I think they could have got it done in maybe about an hour forty five or, or less. But it was, it was good to watch. It was a nice it was a nice little feel good thing there. Um, also. Uh, our dearly departed uh, Chadwick Boseman, the, ne- the next movie or his last performance that, that we have from him is in a movie called Ma Rainey's Black Bottle. It's based off a play by August, Willie, uh, August Wilson, and um, he'll be in that. And it's, it's based off of a, a blues singer in the 1920s who uh, is having some issues with her white manager. So we, I mean, we'll... We'll see that rendition when it comes out. It should be hitting, well, supposedly hitting theaters in December of uh, 2000, um, this December, December 18, 2020. One thing I wanted to correct from last week was I talked about um, coming to America. It was actually, I don't know if I made this clear, but it was actually purchased by Amazon and it will be available on Amazon. So, I don't know if it'll have a theatrical release or not. I would assume that they would probably put it in a theater just so it, it would be eligible for awards or something like that. Because I would think a, a, a movie of that magnitude may get some things, may get some nods for um, best costumes and things of that nature. Not to mention that performances could be Oscar worthy as well. But sometimes you win those uh, technical awards and stuff like that when, when you have things that capture uh, new, uh, not a new culture, but a culture or, or trying to, or pushes the boundaries of what the costume should be, you know? So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, and so last thing I want to talk about is since we're so close to Halloween, I wanted to come up with some movies I thought people should watch for Halloween. Now you guys are all, you can all chime in and add into this, but I think 
Some people should, should look at these particular movies. I would say Friday the 13th, the original one. And um, yeah, Friday the 13th, the original one. Then um, the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, the, the first one. <laughs> oh, a lot of this list, I'm going to be like the original one, the first one. Fright Night, the original one, if you remember that show. And I've never seen that. that. Yeah, and then Creep Show. If you remember Creep Show, when the lady hits the guy with the car and he comes back, he's like, thanks for the ride, lady. Thanks for the <laughs> ride, lady. <laughs> so, so say those four again. Say those four again. Okay. Uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street. That's the Freddy Krueger, the original one. Then um, Friday the 13th, which is the original thing that spawned the Jason franchise. Reason I picked number one. I don't know if I can get... Can I give a 40-year-old spoil? Yeah. Alert. <laughs> yeah. Know, For 40 you know, years, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. He wasn't the original killer. So I think it's good because it gives that little that twist to it. Um, wasn't the mother the original killer? She was indeed. Yeah. And I didn't want to... Yeah, so that's out there. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, totally. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, she did. She told it all. Like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, look how old the movie is. If they didn't know that, but but the young, but the younger generation didn't know, they would have went no, back. They may not. Yeah. Because they because you know, sometimes they reboot the stuff and they you know they don't really you know they just the they, every time you see a new one, it's always focused on Jason, 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 and not you know she was not the, the history. Was like hey, yeah. So um, fright the original fright night. If you remember that that movie, the only thing that always got me with that it was a vampire movie basically. But the thing that always got me like with that was when the girlfriend had got turned into a vampire and her mouth opens up real wide. I always uh, even though I watch it, I don't know if it's like nostalgia that makes me feel like it's really creepy because it. I mean, it doesn't really look that all that great, but it is. It's a nice <laughs> film. I like it. Um, the original Creep Show again. Uh, that was a I believe Stephen King wrote Creep Show, and then they made it to, to a movie. I'm pretty sure it's one of his properties. Um, but yeah, there's a scene in there. Where there's a what? There's a it's a it's a movie that's made of anthologies, and one of the stories is a, a guy, a hitchhiker, who gets hit by a woman. I don't know if she's multitasking when she drives or whatever, but she hits him. She doesn't stop. And he sort of haunts her. I can't remember how it ends, but I remember we would always say, thanks for the ride, lady. Uh, you just <laughs> then remember there's, that. Um, Get Out is on the list. Phantasm, if you haven't seen that. Uh, anything, oh, I don't remember that. You don't remember Phantasm? Yeah, uh, I do. Oh, you re- yeah, that was really, I, it's, yeah. That was out there. Yeah, it was. Go, go um, ahead, finish, Rubo. Get Out. Uh, black anything Black Mirror. I mean, it's not necessarily Halloween, but it is creepy as all hell. If you ever watch Black Mirror on Netflix, it's all it's all it's it's Halloween worthy. Um, I can't go without saying that you got to watch that Charlie Brown Halloween. You know, or was it Happy Halloween, Charlie Brown? Was that the name of it? Yeah, but they're not playing it this year. Oh, the Great Pumpkin. Yeah, got to watch the Great Pumpkin. I forgot the damn name of it, but yeah, you got to watch the Great Pumpkin. And then seven, seven to me is like really disturbing. You know, if you remember that movie seven. And then one of my personal favorites is uh, Sleepy Hollow with uh, starring Johnny Depp. I love that Ooh. movie. It's about the headless horseman and, all, and that sort of thing. Is that I, a scary really movie too? That movie. And one of my favorites that will also show up in December is A Nightmare Before Christmas, the Tim Burton uh, animation. Well, it's, it's a, I don't know if it's claymation animation, but one of those mations. Um, <laughs> it, 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 it draw, it, it's about, um, uh, Halloween wanting to take on Christmas as far as like, Hey, we can do Christmas. And you see all the hijinks that happens with that. So yeah, that, that's my list. All right. Well, I'm, I'm not a movie, a scary movie watcher. Cause I'm so scary. Scariest video of all time. I'm still scared of Thriller. <laughs> Vampire in Brooklyn. Vampire in Brooklyn was a scary movie to me. Really? 
It was funny to me. It was. It was it had, its, it had its moments. Now I noticed that you put "Get Out" on there. You put that on there as a scary movie. I told you that my son and yeah. his friend they was like that was scary. Is it because it was it, such it, reality? It was a reality I mean, check. Part, I mean, I, I mean, a part of it was definitely built in reality. As far as like, hey, you can have people kidnap you for whatever their purposes are. Not a whole brain body switch thing. That's the you know that's the stretch. But the whole thing is just being like. I hate it. <laughs> Sometimes it's being black in America is a horror movie. You know, like, All right. Oh, I don't know. You know, and I think I think this kind of encapsulates that whole experience in a sense. You know, so yeah. Plus, I wanted to give Jordan Peele a shout out too. I mean, because I liked Us, but I prefer Get Out better. I, more, I should say. But okay. Us is, Us is creepy as shit too. I'm sorry. I mean, it, I know you. I, I know the cussing, but. Us, us is something too. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> oh, here it is. There you go. Y'all missed yeah. the bell. Y'all missed the bell. Hey, I listen. Listen to this. I finally got this lipstick thing under control. I was like, now nah, it's not all on my teeth. Cheap lipstick. Don't do it. When they give you samples, don't do it. And the little Avon, this is way back. That's what I get. The little tiny little Avon color samples. Don't try them before you get ready to do something. I thought it was a cute color, though. And see how long the stains look on there. But it was on my teeth for a long time. I finally got it under control. Ding. For the listening audience. <laughs> it was driving me nuts. I'm like, ah, oh, this lipstick is like, you keep in there. What is going on? All right, listen. Avon is a fine product. Avon, look, at, look, Avon is a, Avon, Allerail, and uh, was it Mary Kay? Let's shout out. Um, Allorel is uh, a makeup line for or skincare line too for women of color, all color that a lot of people didn't know about. And that's Allorel. I want to let me see how you a a a u or l. I don't know. Allorel sound it out, but it's got a u in there. Look, <laughs> I'm like sound it out. It got a u in there, but it's Allorel. Uh, that's for women of color. I use the skincare product though. So shout out to you, uh, Anna Harden. Okay, let's give her a shout out because that's where I get my stuff from. Nice. See? But I didn't get this cheap lipstick from there. I'm telling you, it's like Play-Doh. They made it out of something. Like, like what you got? What you, what you in the Halloween costume? You, you remember the Halloween makeup? Yes! I got but, that! That's that blood! Know, you get the vampire teeth and you get the red, you get the, the red, red green, yeah. black, and, and white. <laughs> Yes, it's like that red blood to be stuck on there. I don't know how long this going to be on my lips for, but it's probably going to be there for a long time. That's that cheap. Look at me. I'm like, I'm puckering my lips. Like It's still like stuck. It's still on there. We'll see how long it is. So stay away from cheap lipstick. Um, It's almost like a matte. Matte is back. Yeah, matte yeah. color. Um, when we're talking makeup is back. And that's how it's, it's that before the high gloss. But let's talk about this. Let's talk about some trials that we had and how we could think back and laugh at those trials. Um, and without being the victim, reading the role of the victim. Okay. So um, I'm going to do this, incorporate this. I did this on Be Inspired yesterday. I'm incorporate this as my Q tips. Okay. My Q tips and reading the role of being the victim. And the way that you read the role of being the victim is saying yes to your life experiences. And say, okay, here we go. Trusting again, even though you deal with something different. Being vulnerable and understanding that that person didn't do the same thing to you. Smile through your trials. Look back at what you've actually gone through. And you can laugh at it and be like, did that really happen? And again, I'm going to say, say yes to your life experiences. Because we learn and we grow from those things. Um if you feel like somebody hurt you, um, if it was a parent, grandparent, ancestors, you want to be a good citizen in society, demonstrate the best part of them. What you remember best about them, their best qualities, and incorporate that in today's society. And always remember that you are not inadequate. Okay, you have the tools to do whatever it is you want to do. So, Nick, I'm talking to you as far as you going back to school. You figure out what it is and do what it do what it is that you need to do. You already had the tools. You're in your right mind. Make it happen. Say I can and I will. So you can become 
you can complete your bucket list. Right. That's the goal. That's our goal. Make a bucket list and complete it. And then once you finish those, you can add more to it. I completed everything in my bucket list. I'm excited about it. And I, I did everything I wanted to do. I'll just put it that way. I'm sure there's more that I'll enjoy because I will definitely say yes to life experiences. Okay. And enjoy things as I do them and accomplish more things. But I have, I can actually say I checked off all of my things on the bucket list, except Will Smith. Now I don't want to go to the problem with the new Will Smith. I'm not, I'm not feeling that. Why are you shaking your head, Rugo? Look at him and Nick both shake their head. I ain't interested in the new Will Smith. Jada done broke him down. She done broke him down. With them entanglements. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, he don't even look the same. He had a little, he was nice. He had that little swag. He was like the ideal guy. You know what I mean? You know, how you, if I couldn't make the ideal guy, I would say God fearing. Of course, you know, Christian God fearing. A little hood, a little roughneck. I need a little bit. I need a gentleman. I need like a hip hop. All that together, like hip hop, uh, roughneck, gentleman, God fearing. That would be the perfect guy. Oh, and rich and generous. That's a that would be my perfect guy. Go ahead, Nick. I I, I would add one more, but um, I I can't say it on here. Yes, you can. Oh, and 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 functioning. Functioning in, 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 in a rather large package. <laughs> now you Rugo shaking his head. If you could, if you can have the ideal female, what would you, what would you? Oh, I don't like the short guy either. Go ahead. I don't even know. You don't know. Whoever, whoever would reach my heart in the most significant way. Not he's so, look, look at him. He's so he's kind. So nice today. Look at that. That is so. That is well received. So when he sees a nice female before he was married, he used to, let me tell you, he used to sit over there in the corner and be like, oh, look at her personality over there. His, see, see her personality uh, radiating across the room. <laughs> you should be a poet. You should, you should write cards. Yeah, Rugos you know cards. I, I wanted to write cards for, uh, I put, I, <laughs> I actually applied for a job with American Greeting Cards before. And Why don't you do your own brand? I, you know what? Because I didn't think of that. There you go. Right here. You heard it. Right now. here. Shop Talk with Mel. Rugal's. Rugal's getting ready to start his own brand of cards. Um, The thank you cards. Thanks for nothing. Thanks for nothing. There you go. That's a good one. That is a good uh-huh. one. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you, card. Thanks for Wait, nothing. Thanks for nothing and thanks for nothing. No. Thank you. Look, it was a wonderful night. I will truly look. I can't. I can't unsee that. <laughs> it was a wonderful night. Here's your forty dollars. Ah, that's a good. Now that's a good card. Forty dollars on the nightstand. That's that's a good card. All right, let me tell you. Um, I'm I'm going to give you an example of my smile through my trials. Um, that I actually incurred. I had surgery done. And at that time, um, it was a major surgery that I had done. And I guess, uh, well, I I don't guess I'll tell you. I guess the surgery was supposed to be a few hours, but it ended up being longer. Um, Me being in the medical field and knowing that uh, this is different. I got somebody outside the room pretty much watching me what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, why is she out there? But anyway, long story short, I was experiencing some issues cause I couldn't feel my feet. So it was a young nurse out there and not that I'm opposed to new grads. I'm not, I'm not opposed to new grads. Cause I too was a new grad, uh, nurse long time ago. And somebody gave me the opportunity, but this young nurse really got on my nerves. Let me tell you why she got on my nerves because she was outside the room and she was talking to the janitor all about her, boyfriend issues they having a conversation i'm saying excuse me excuse me trying to get the attention of her to let her know i can't feel my feet something's going on so she's talking to the janitor um they were having a great conversation boom 30 minutes go by i'm like listen this is serious you know so she finally i finally get her attention once i get her attention she comes in and instead of listening to what i had to say i guess she thought 
um, she was helping me. Now, there's a device called the PCA. The, what the PCA does is anesthesia, and you push it. It looks like a call light, and you administer your own medication. Well, guess what she did? So I'm getting ready to tell her what's going on with me, and what she does is she presses the button. So this is what happened, Rugal. I go to tell her what's going on, and this is this is what happens. She pushed the button. I was like, can you? She put me back to sleep. <laughs> so then I wake up again. She comes back in. She puts me back to sleep. Finally, you know, my mom comes in the room. I'm like, help me, please. But there was a housekeeper that came in. I guess she was getting the trash whatever. And I'm telling her, I can't feel my feet. But every time the nurse comes, she keep pushing this button and making me go back to sleep. So then what ended up uh, happening is they were able to see that the something was leaking or whatever. And I genuinely couldn't feel my feet. Because she's like, well, I'm going to get you in the chair. No, you're not going to get me in the chair. Because I can't feel my feet. I'm going to fall. And see, me having the background, the reason I state that, me having the medical background, I know you don't want your patient to fall. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, I'm a nurse just like you. You don't want your patient to fall. I'm telling you, I can't feel my feet. You're not going to move me from the bed to the chair. Mind you, I'm in ICU, okay? And she, when she came in, when she pushed, you know, pushed my PCA, pushed my anesthesia button, she was on her cell phone. Stop, stop, stop. So I'm like, this is like the worst experience ever. But now I look back like, is this for real? Because if it was on a movie, no lie. If it was on a movie, I would be rolling. The lady coming in there like, put just put you to sleep. Like, I don't feel like dealing with you now. Mm, let me put you to sleep. I don't think that was the case. I think she was just answering for me. That's what I believe. I believe that she actually was answering for me. It was like, um... Uh, she must want some pain medicine. Let me go ahead and push this. Don't assume. You have to listen to the people. So that's where I was at. And now I can look back and say, hmm, that was tragic for me at that time. But I got through it and now I can laugh at it. Have you experienced something that you were upset with, Rugo, at the time? And now you can look back on it and laugh. Um, I can't really say that I can. I was thinking about, because usually, I mean, I could laugh that I was so angry, but not laugh because I thought it was, you know. Well, well share, what, what do you mean? Because you're smiling now, what happened? <laughs> talking, talking about the hospital makes me think about that. There's been times where, like, people around me, I've had some service where I thought, like, this isn't right. And I've said some things about it. I remember, and, um, I had some family members that were like, hey, you need to chill out because these people have to take care of you. And I was like, um, they don't have to do shit. I can leave right now. <laughs> Look up. Look, let me ding that. <laughs> like, hey, I'll, I'll leave right now. It doesn't matter. You know, um, and, and I, when I laugh, I laugh back on it because, like, it just it always makes me believe that you got to be your own advocate because people who have good intentions for you may not be willing to press the envelope um, or push the envelope like you would for yourself, not press. All right, go ahead, Nick. You have anything that you experienced before that you really ticked you off and then you could think back and laugh like, is this really happening? Did that really happen? Oh, Lord. Uh, me, several things. Anytime I'm somewhere thinking I'm cute and I fall, that's tragic. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. How often do you fall? <laughs> yeah. How often do you fall? Do you, should we get, we need to take her should we get her evaluated? Yeah, you might need a walker or something. <laughs> the night before I got married. What? We were big dudes. I'm told uh, to my girls with me and I have a Oh, girl. you weren't even ready. I'm walking one minute. And the next minute, I was on the floor. But guess what? That cut, they was cracking up. That cup was up like this. I didn't spill it. It didn't go nowhere. They got me out. Everybody knew I was tore up. They could tell. But that's they different. But what about if you weren't? I had a little sash on. I was mad. I was mad because I was embarrassed. But afterwards, I could laugh about it. I had another instance where I left my <laughs> walking past the light. In a bar, and the little the lights in the window, like the little Miller light thingies. Uh huh. And I had a real big puff ponytail on, and I was leaving because I had to go get my husband from work because his car was in the shop. 
Walk past that yeah, light, and all of a sudden I felt the breeze on my head up to the road. My ponytail was hanging on the light. That was embarrassing. I was mad. That's- and I got in the car, and I cracked up. I called my friend and told her. She said, what's the matter? I was laughing so hard, I was crying. But yeah, I was embarrassed, and I was mad. I was like, I need to do something with this light. <laughs> so wait a minute. So they had the the, the Miller light sign to snatch your ponytail. Yes, it did. <laughs> and when I turned around, my ponytail had the nerve to be swinging. <laughs> you ain't go back and get your ponytail. Yeah, I went back and got it and put it right on my head in front of everybody in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went back. One dude was like, "Wait, wait, wait, wait! You went back? Oh, you went back after you went and did what you did." I uh, sure did go back in there. As soon as I dropped my husband off, I went back to continue to drink. That dude was like, you and G, and the other one was like, why do you even have that in you? All that hair you got on your head, you still got to, because I had one of the big puff ponies. He was like, all that hair you got in your head, you still, I said, because I'm not bald-headed and I like variety. <laughs> but wait a minute. So you went back to the club, put your ponytail back on after everybody had seen it. You just won't grab it. Th- no, I put my ponytail. As soon as I felt that it was going, I turned around, seen it swinging. I snatched it and put it right back <laughs> on my head. Everybody and walked right on out the door. And then after I went, got my husband dropped him off. I went back to the bar. Now listen. I had a drink that I asked somebody to hold for me. Listen, I'm <laughs> gonna put this out here. Don't ever leave. Don't ever walk away from your drink. I gotta. I gotta say it. <laughs> but you knew, right, it. right. I got you. I got you. Now, Nick, you done fell down. You done, you done, the bar done snatched your ponytail off. You done fell down at the bar. <laughs> we got a common denominator. We got two common denominators. You got another one? You got another trial that happened at the bar? Yeah. See? It, it, this one I fell and it jacked my knee up again, but I was walking across the street. Don't ask me what I fell on. I think my ankle twisted. I twisted my ankle when I stepped on a rock. And listen, the both times that I fell, I had on these particular shoes. Needless to say, and they still brand new. Them bad boys is in my closet. And I don't put them on again. Okay, so so it had nothing to do with the drinks at the bar. No. Okay. All right. So it was the shoes. Well, not the same, not the not that time that I fell. Okay. And slid across the street on my knee. <laughs> The, the day before I got married, it did. I was told up. Not tell but me still, this. The two times I had them shoes on. Okay. I'll never wear those shoes again. Okay, well, you better get rid of those shoes, and we're going to keep you uplifted. All right? Exactly. Rugal, <laughs> you want to add to add Nick? Nick the boy, look, what's happening with Nick the boy? She got two common denominators. The shoes <laughs> and the bar. <laughs> the shoes and the bar. What you think? In other words, stay out the bar. <laughs> Do we need it? Me. That might be it, or it might be like, make sure you get your party tell on tight. I mean, any, <laughs> anytime, anytime the bar signs is snatching you up by the party <laughs> tail. Snatched her up. Right. <laughs> right off my head up, and I was thinking I was cute too. But I, I know the club she's talking about when she said <laughs> after that that place. I was. I laughed. At, yeah, that's crazy. And you know, you know the place. Uh, she said, "Big dudes, right?" She's where that yeah, when I, yeah, when I, because I was coming from one side past the pool, and you know when you that little incline to get on. Yeah, but oh. I bet you I was holding my drink. It didn't spill. Look, look, I heard talking about it didn't spill. I was holding, and, and I and I gotta say this: don't drink and drive. I know y'all heard her testimony. But I'm going to say this, don't drink and drive. I don't want y'all drinking and driving. And always have somebody to walk you to your car because who knows if you might fall. Right, exactly. (laughs) On a rock. We don't want that to happen. Rugo, you had an experience at your job being a the only male. Okay. And you were in that meeting. And I want you to share. I was hoping that that was the one that you talked about. You were in the meeting. And the lady was speaking, and she thought that you were hostile or wasn't paying her any attention. And you were no, staring uh, at her. Wasn't, that wasn't even at a job. Oh, that was, was it? No, nah, that wasn't it. That was at a, that was at, I was a guest 
of someone else's to meet with this person who has some clout, right? Okay. We're we're there listening to her spiel, and I'm just looking at her, listening, and she just stops the meeting and says, what, did I say something that you didn't like or something like that? And I was like, and, and I, I and it's so funny because the way we were set up was like I was the last person in the room, right? <laughs> like like I was the last person at the table. It was only like four of us, and I look and I I actually looked back to see if she was talking about somebody else. You know what I mean? And I was like, she can't be talking to me. You know, I did one of these, and uh, yeah, I was like, no, I was just listening to what you were saying. I had no no opinion was formed yet. I was just listening. Intently listening to you, and she, and she thought, thought and she thought that you were not interested in what she had to say, or what? I don't know. She, I, I, she thought it, she whatever she thought it was negative because you were you listening and thought it was negative. You were yeah, you I mean, were listening intensively. So yeah, was, so so did you have your hand under your chin? Um, I can't remember. Maybe. I can't remember. I don't think so, though. I might have, you know, I don't think so. No, I don't think I have. You know, I don't think I was resting like this or anything like that. But I was just like, just looking. And she, I was like, man, I'm glad you ain't judging me. <laughs> Based off I mean? you listening. Because like, if you, if you looking at people making a decision, making, making uh, concerns about how they feel just off of the way they look at you. You know, and you're talking. That was the thing. It wasn't like she was just in the room and I was just looking at her like, I can't stand her. I'm there to hear what you have to say. It's a, only four of us in the room. Only four of you in the room and she points you out and you're listening. You, well, thank God you weren't interrupting because if you started talking while she was talking, then you'd be disrespectful. Well, I, I obviously my face was disrespecting her. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! I just got that kind of look, right? <laughs> I, I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a complete shock because it was like it was so weird that it happened. You know, it was just like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? And it was, you know, it was one of those things where I mean, I just said like, I don't know. I'm just listening to you. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't, I didn't make any face or anything like that. I'm nobody farted in the room. You know, nothing like that. I was just, just looking. You know. But yeah. Interesting. Now, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't really laugh about that one just because of the. Um... That's that's one of those things like I me personally, I would look like she maybe she was crazy. That's I why. I, look... mean, I mean, with uh, the position this person holds, it really made me think a lot about how people are sometimes perceived when it's not their intention. And if you have a certain power over people, that can be dangerous. And that's right. sad. You need to have an open mind. That, and, yeah. and, and that's I mean, sad because that is them making it. That's their perception. And you didn't say a single word. So that's them and their a, issue. Not a word. But just think if you were being, if this thing, if this person was making a decision on your behalf, and th- so what do you do? Sometimes you can't do nothing. What you going to do? And you know what you, you know say? What I mean? like, you say. Like, yeah, like, um, it was like, I remember, I can't, it was something that happened before. But just some certain things, how people kind of perceive things. And they like, well, this person may not be interested because of it. Like if somebody, like, for example, there's certain people to get mad. If they're talking to you, even if they're giving you instruction and you have your arms folded. Well, guess what? That's a that's a personal issue with them. And see, and my thoughts would be if that's somebody who holds power, I'm not going to kiss your butt. I'm not going to do the uh, alleged was a Christopher Williams thing to P. Diddy to get a record deal. Get your life. I'm not doing that. My thing is maybe that's not the position for you. And that person has a problem. Now, I if you perceive me to be one way and I haven't even opened my mouth. That's an issue. And if you are in a position of power and you feel like, oh, okay, well, I think that they're doing this. You cannot think for other people. People have to stop thinking that they can think for other people or know what other people are thinking, which ties me back to my situation where the young girl came in and PCA'd me and put me to sleep. You can't assume that this is what this person is thinking. You have to ask 
and be open and talk to the person. Now, if you don't want to argue with somebody, now what if you would have sat there and said, <laughs> if, <laughs> I can segue into this one. If they perceived you as not uh, being interested in what they're saying and you're saying you're, you were listening intensely, all you had to do, you know how you could have shut that down? And instead of the thought being on you, the, got up and said, that's why people laugh at you and walked away. <laughs> that's why people be laughing at you. Right, right, and walk away. Yeah. And walk away. You know, it, was, it was a lot of ways I could have went with in that, during that time. Don't do that at home, people. I'm just saying, but if you don't want to argue, just, just say that. Be like, I see why people be laughing at you and walk away. Go ahead. <laughs> No, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, yeah, that would have, that would have been, that would have made him paranoid. But it was just, um, it it was more or less like, because the thing was, I was, when I say I was listening to them, I was looking directly at that person. So sometimes we caught eyes because you know when you're speaking to a group of people, you know your eyes kind of bounce to people to people or whatever. You know what I mean? So you know it was like I'm just looking attentively at what she had to say. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next one to be up out of here. Last topic of to well, actually it's really not, but let's hurry up and speed through here. What's your feelings on somebody parking in front of your house? It's, Are you I get a fire hydrant in front of my house, so go ahead. Oh, lucky <laughs> you. Go ahead. What's your Nick? In front of your house. I used to have that happen all the time when I lived in Farrell, my next door neighbors. Her family would always park in front of my house, and we'd have to park across the street, and I would be snapping. Oh. From now on, and listen, if I don't have no personal driveway, if you're parking in front of my house, and I can't park in front of my own house, your car is getting towed. Well, guess I what? You, you don't. Well, guess what? Your car, the car can't be towed because you don't own the street. Yeah, yeah but they parking it, and I can't park in front of my house. Yeah, that's a. You need to. You need to. I need to mention that too. In in this area, in this area, most people have driveways. In some places, people don't have driveways, and I can see why how that could be a problem. And you got to walk all the way down the street from your house all the time. And I used to be like, "Listen, y'all, park down here." Yeah, I never park down here. Don't park in front of my house. Me and my husband got to park here. Okay, go ahead, Google. I never understood why. That area, a lot of that area is made like that. I never understood that. Well, you got New York. You got um, like people that live downtown. You know, you just hope that yeah. there's an empty, look, empty parking place in front of and your house. Riding around until they find one. Listen, I don't live in no heavily tra- uh, traffic area like that. I ain't about to keep riding around. But what if you have a party? Like you have, like y'all know, like I'll do, I'll have different things. At you know, at my house, and you know, it'd be packed. What if the neighbors come like, can you tell your people not to park there, not to park in front of my house because it is, you know, when you have events, it just happens. But yeah. here's the deal: you don't own the street, so no. that's it. You just be, you just hope. Maybe you could put one of them signs out there. <laughs> no parking. It didn't take it out. It happened. To, it's, I'll tell you a quick story. It happened to me the other day. I parked and I was doing some walking, but I parked in front of this one house and I was on my way back. But then this guy started walking down the street and he came up to me. He's like, is that your car? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, my landlord doesn't like people to park in front of the house. And I, I'm looking at him like, you must be crazy. I was like, because what I said to him was like this. I said, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't see a no parking sign. Right. And that's it. There is, there is no no parking sign. But this guy wanted to make an issue about my car being parked in front of his house. And that's something we have to realize that we don't own the street. All right, let's talk politics real quick. Ice Cube, D.L. Hughley going at it back and forth. Um, D.L. Hughley has something to say about Ice about Ice Cube. Um, we talked about what he went to speak to uh, President Trump about. Um and D.L. Hughley, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, pretty much said, this is me paraphrasing, that lead that to the people that know what they're talking about. Did, y'all, did, you, did you catch that interview? I, I, I heard what he said. He was just like, 
he was like, why are these people having conversation with the guy who made three Friday movies instead of like doctors, lawyers, educators, and all that kind of stuff? Right. Which, and I thought that, but, but here's the thing. Just because, like here, just because I do shop talk with Mel and you're like, oh, okay, well, she might, you know, have a degree in communications. Don't mean I don't have a degree in something else and I don't know what I'm talking about. You have people that actually can give knowledge and everything is not a piece of paper. Everything is not a piece of paper that you're talking about. You may have experienced some things that can share your knowledge with people. And here's somebody that they don't know. Well, I'm sure you guys know I'm, I'm an NWA fan. Ice Cube is very intelligent. And just because you know him from NWA or the Friday and all that other stuff doesn't mean that he doesn't have the intellect to talk to somebody or give an idea to somebody. And that's what we have to stop doing you know, we have to stop saying, okay, what we think people know. They don't even know him. Like, y'all know me. So y'all can come and see the degrees. The other people, they don't know. You know what I mean? But to say, okay, well, you don't have any input because you don't have the paperwork to follow. I know some people that is local and they got the paper and they don't know what the heck is going on. Like, get your life and stop making stuff up and stop lying and stop smiling at people's face and then talking about them behind their back. Just be 100. But D.L. Hughley was 100, and he didn't. He said it, boom, and Ice Cube clapped back. And go ahead and elaborate, Rugal, because I know you went. Ice Cube said that he was consulting with someone. I forgot who he said he was consulting with, but whoever the person was, they're sort of um, a good person to consult with, I guess. Um, The 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 thing I the problem. Okay, this is the thing I would say is that I don't know if it was so much about Ice Cube having a plan and all that stuff as it was the way that everything was presented made it seem like it was an endorsement for Trump. I think okay. I think that was the catalyst that kind of pissed everybody off. And it was. Like, you know, so I but but the thing is is that I, I'll tell you this, um I don't know if it, maybe I'm is the plan available for people to read? Because I have never, I can't find it. Um, I tried to, I couldn't find it. Too. I, I couldn't find it either, even last week when we talked about the issue with Ice Cube and they were thinking that he was endorsing because they were talking about 50 Cent was, uh, well, you know, 50 Cent is endorsing Trump allegedly because of the tax issue. Yeah, 50 Pence. Yeah, because He's of the what? tax. Yeah, they calling him 50 Pence. But 50 Cent, uh, oh. the rapper, yeah. They're saying that he is, but nobody's paying attention to 50, you know, do what you do. I think that, I think that people should be able to vote for who they want to vote for. Um, Ice Cube made it plain. He was on Fox Soul with uh, Claudia Jordan and he spoke about it. He said, it's not that I went to the Democrats too. And they said to wait until they see, you know, who wins the election and the Republicans wanted to hear him out. I didn't, I couldn't find it either. Um, Rugal. So I get it, but like I don't, we don't know what was in that plan. Like, we don't, like, we, we don't know I mean? what was in that plan. But let me, let me, for Ice Cube's sake, let me say this. Let me be fair. He did say he said he put the middle finger. He said get the f out of here or something like that. Allegedly, like that's not what he's saying. Somebody took a picture. There's a picture of Fifty Cent and Ice Cube, and they changed the logos on his hat. He was upset about that. It's, he was like, no, I'm not endorsing him. This is what I'm talking about. He said, I presented it to both parties. So I just want to put that out there. And no, he's not saying that he's endorsing Trump, but they're using it for their benefit. Okay, go ahead, Rugal. Well, I mean, but the, but, the, but what, how it can be implied is the Democrats who say that they're for you wouldn't even hear my plan until after they took power versus the Republicans who want to hear it right away. You know what I mean? But that's like, because he's there in office now, though. That, that's how I took it. I took it as... I, I, understand that but i mean but he put that out there like that you know what i mean like, I it, should, it, like it should have been like hey i presented this plan and it, 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 regardless of I, I presented this plan to everybody he like, did. He, you know so right now you got a plan that you want these political groups to endorse or or, or embrace but like the people you wrote it for I mean, I, like I said, I can't. I haven't been able to read it. I don't know where it's at. I don't know what it what it contains. You know, uh, if you're so, able to, if you're able to catch uh, Claudia Jordan Fox Fox Soul, he goes into detail on that, and he also he also explains himself with um, Cuomo. I always say the name wrong. Oh, CNN is it CNN? Yeah, yeah. But I want to read it. 
I don't want it. I don't want it. You don't want to hear what he has to say? I want to read it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, is it, if it's available for me to be able to read, somebody please send it to me. I okay. want to read it. Okay. All right. What else you got with the politics? I heard, um, I heard the president of the Republican Party in the area, Tracy Wimbush, she was talking and she was saying that um, Biden is in the t- living in the 20th century and Trump has brought us back to the 21st century. And then there was uh, someone who uh, pretty much said, matter of fact, I'll say a shout out to you, David Hood. Um, he had posted that um, America is not ready for a black female president. So he thinks that people won't vote for for Biden because they think that he won't make it and Kamala Harris would end up being the president. Do you agree or disagree? I, I think that that's this ridiculous talk, but that could be somebody's thought. I mean, early on when um, Obama was running, people was like, I don't know if I want him to be president. He might get killed. Well, I'm like, well, let him die then. If that's the case, you know. Let, let him die him being die. president. Nobody wants him to get killed, of course, but the point is, is like, don't don't let him miss out on the opportunity because you think what might happen, where it's, where it's kind of like baseless, you know. Um, the, the other thing with that is, how can someone say that Trump is living in the 21st century when he says, make America great like it was in the 1950s? And who was it great Boom. for? What's it great for us? You know, Boom! I mean that's the I mean that's the thing. I mean like you cannot you cannot say you especially when you have not introduced a new no plan at all. The question was one of the questions that he was asked was, Well, what would you do with health care? Or no oh no, it was, it was about them it was about the um Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, if you will. And he and he, and he was like, I, I hope the Supreme Court strikes it down and then we'll put in something. And it's like, well, if you have an alternative, put it in now. You don't need that law to be stricken down for you to do something that you need to do, right? And he hasn't done that. Like, like, what's his like? What's his plan for? The, the, no platform has been introduced about what the future holds under a Trump administration. What? No, 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 no information has been given. What do you want to do for health care? I, I, we're going to make it great. We're going to make it better. We just need to get rid of the But how? How? But how? But what's your plan? What's your plan to handle existing uh, conditions? Doesn't talk about it. You know, what's your plan with the economy? Doesn't talk about it. All it is is tax breaks for rich. And no, you know, no, ink, no, no. Uh, then he, the only thing he wanted to do because of COVID, he wanted to cut. He wanted to do something with our taxes, which would have made us end up paying more taxes. He wanted to cut our payroll tax. It would have made us into paying more anyway. Like a whole bunch of like ridiculous things. What stood, like, you know, what stood out most to you during the debate? This last debate. I didn't watch this last one. Okay. I, didn't watch, I didn't watch this last one. All right, Nick, what stood out most to you during the debate? Did you catch it? I was asleep because I had to go to work. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you what stood yeah. out most to me. What stood out most to me was the fact that he said, I am the least racist person in the room. 45 said that I am the least and and listen and you can you can find it listen but here's the thing though saying I am the least racist still states that I am a racist and that's what I'm like are is anybody listening just like the debate prior to that um they say can you denounce white supremacy and the response was stand back and stand by so now you have in my mind i have stand back stand by and i am the least racist person in the room so you had him and you had uh by i don't know who was in the room he said it was dark but it doesn't even matter so you're forgetting or, or not listening to what he's actually saying and they're like, right. you did not say, I am not a racist. I yeah. am the least racist yeah. person in the room. Right. Go ahead. Hey, but the thing is, is like this. Who is the guy that he's looking at and saying like, oh my God, I'm racist, but I'm not that racist. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? I'm my point, like exactly. My point, exactly. And, and it's like, are we omitting the subject? J- just like before. Yeah. Here we go. Can you denounce them? 
stand back and stand by. That is not a denouncement. That's saying when I give you the word, then go forward. Okay. Then is I am the least yeah. racist in the room. Well, you just told me you were a racist. You said you are the least racist. Instead of saying I am not, just like Nick, just like Nick said, what'd you say, Rugo? They should have been like, How racist are you? Let me ask you this question. Do black lives matter? Right. Well, we listen. <laughs> Somebody should be asking flat out. Do you know this is a, it's like like we don't care about police officers. We're not asking you about any other group of people. We're asking you, do black lives matter? Listen, you ain't even got to go that far because they ask direct no, questions. Don't. And he's never, he his, he always responded, but never answered. And see, that's my thing. I'm listening to what you say. I hear, I hear what you say and I'm listening to what you're not saying. I'll put it that way. I don't even need all of that. Let's deal with the basis. Let's deal with the root. I am the least racist in the room. Look at the sentence. Just like that sentence that I asked before. Any female that pay her own bills is single. Look at the sentence. All that extra stuff and rhetoric and changing the narrative. We don't need all of that. I'm listening to what's here. And this is exactly what is here. And you have to listen to what they say. They say guys are easy. And I'm going to say why guys are easy. Guys are easy because you guys say exactly what you want. It's us that put all the flowers and everything on it. You say you want to spend the rest of your life with us. Listen to this. You say, a guy will say, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. We got the wedding. We planned the wedding. We did all that. You never said, I want to marry you. You just said, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. We make the meaning out to what we wanted it. We want it to be. And that's what's happening here. And I got to close the show. I enjoy you lovely people. Look, Rugo got something you want to say. <laughs> I'm going to let you say I'm going to let you say it, but vote for who it is that you want to vote for. Please vote, vote, vote. I choose me. And even if you don't like the candidates that are in office or that is running, you got to choose you and you have to hear it. And anytime that I feel personally that uh, stand back and stand by, like, okay, my life doesn't matter. Just like Rugal said, you know, he used that as that's an organization. My thing is social injustices. Please, can we be done with social injustices for everyone? And again, I will say over and over and over again for those lovely people to say all lives matter. If all lives mattered, there would be no reason or no purpose for the Black Lives Matter movement. Exactly. All right. And today's footnote, I guess that could have been today's footnote, but I'm going to give you today's footnote to the lovely people and the topic of today. You are not inadequate. You have all the tools, just as, as I stated earlier. All you have to do is set your mind to it and say, I can and I will. And again, always, always choose you. And hey, I am um, a grand auntie, a great auntie. What is, is that a thing? Congratulations, Corey Faison. What is that? I'm, I'm a, I'm a great, great auntie. A great auntie. Yeah. Rugo, you know what that means? Um, yeah, you're like, you're like, not a, you're, you're better than a cool aunt. You're a great aunt. I like it. Yes, <laughs> that's it. That's Isn't it. That Preston. Oh, okay. Great. Yep. Well, Last night. Congratulations. Woo, I need to have my sound effects on. Look, I'm like, I need to have my sound effects. Let's do that one more time. Say congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Yay for baby Carter. I hope um, that's that was the baby's name before it was born. But y'all know how I do it. I had baby names picked out. And then once I had my children, I was like, they don't look like that. I changed your name. <laughs> but baby Carter was the name that was the name as of yesterday hey listen that is my time lovely people I thoroughly enjoyed you as I do each and every single Saturday I love you guys for listening find you embrace you most importantly always always love you until next week people Shop talk right here on your speaker.com. Hey, listen, if you want to donate to the channel, the information is below. We truly appreciate all donations. And I just love you guys for listening and tuning in and share with your people. If you enjoy the conversation, share, right y'all? Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. That is it.